My dad's father was in the lumber business and also a dealer from a comic daring farm machinery. When he was about 12 or 13 years old, his dad bought him his first cow and they moved to the small farm outside of Ashley. There he fell in love, started in the registered Holstein business. And in 1919, he joined the Holstein Association. In 1922, he bought what was a home farm in Elsie. He made his living early in dealing in cattle and later on in the late 1920s in horses. But also he would accumulate some registered cattle and then sell them. His farm in Ashley was known as Greendale Stock Farms. And the prefix he used on his Holstein cattle, in case you see it in later years, was Arbuta. He used that prefix until about 1941 when he changed over to Green Meadow Farms. In 19... 31, he started going to New Jersey, sending cattle to New Jersey. About every three weeks, he'd send a car load. I'm talking about 20 to 25 head of cattle to Flemington, New Jersey. And then he would have a sale at the fairgrounds and, and then drive back. A few years later, he bought a farm in New Jersey where he kept cattle on hand at all times and for many years sent cattle from Michigan to New Jersey to sell. During the 30s, different times he would accumulate a herd of registered cattle, but then would need the money and would sell them. In 1941 is when he got serious about the registered Holsteins. We went to Waukesha, Wisconsin, and bought the bull Osmerdale Ormsby Judge. Paid $810 for him, which was a big price at that time. He was later showed that year and was honorable mention All-American Junior Yearling Bull. In 1943, he dispersed the, the herd, which was 300 and registered. 350 head of registered Holsteins. At that time, that was the largest sale ever held of registered cattle. That was a sale that gave him the money to put him on his feet, got him out of debt. In 1945, he had to give him another herd of cattle, but decided, had bought three grain elevators in St. John's, Ovid, and Carlin. Also, he had a big lumber yard in St. John's. So in 1945, we sold all our cattle except for the bred heifers, which we kept back. In 1946, we did the first showing of cattle. I was 15 years old and they loaded me in a box car and we went to Carroll, Michigan where the state fair was held that year for Holstein cattle as there had not been any state fairs during World War II. From there we went to Columbus, Ohio on the railroad. It was quite an experience for a 15 year old kid. In 1947 went to Illinois State Fair, Wisconsin State Fair, the Ohio State Fair, and the Michigan State Fair, and we were showing both Holsteins and Ayrshires. We bought a, about 20, 25 Ayrshires we had. In 1948, we also went to about the same shows, except we went to Missouri instead of Wisconsin, because there's less competition there.
And we always had on the bill of lading that they put us next to the engine so you didn't get a big bump when they started up. A lot of times we'd wake up in the morning and our ears would be full of soot because we was traveling in the back of a steam engine at that time. Diesels come in three or four years after we started showing. In 1950, we went to Waterloo, Iowa, which is a national dairy show, and to Indianapolis, Indiana, which was an international dairy show. And I met a lot of people in the show circuit that I knew the rest of my life. Most of the old timers I know now are dead. As this picture in my office is, I was taken to Waterloo, Iowa, when I was much younger. And of this date in 2008, we are all deceased except for two of us. In 1946, the barn where, where our front barn is now at home, that barn burned in 1946. And we rebuilt, rebuilt it with the sandstone barn that is there now. The barn in back was built in 1944 and 45. We used German prisoners of war to help dig the wall and pour the cement for the wall and so forth. As there's a prisoner of war camp at Carlin where the racetrack is. There was also a big barn across the road from there where the, where the tool shop is now. That used to hold 64 cows there. And we'd milk in all three places. In 1951, we, we had the world record cow for milk at that time, Green Meadow Lily Paps, and we had a big banquet for her, and had a big banquet at the high school gym. Had a big banquet in Elsie, when Elsie High School was high school. Had about three, four hundred people invited there. Governor G. Menon Williams the pictures in my office. He took the last squirt of milk out of it that night, the last milking. She held that record of 42,805 pounds of milk for, for 20 years before it was broken. Nowadays, there's cows making 60,000 pounds of milk. The year before that, she was a national record cow for two time a day milking with 32,000 pounds of milk and twice a day milk. The man that milked Green Mill Lily Paths was Larry Finch. He was here for several years. In 1959, we got our bulk That's the first time we had a bulk coat. The rest is always in cans. In 1960, we built the milking parlor over in Hollister Road. And the first year we bought 500 Canadian heifers. We started milking there about the 1st of September, 1960. The next year we expanded to 500 more on the south side, we built the barns. So we were milking a thousand cows at that time, plus in the, all the barns around home. It wasn't too long before we closed out all the barns except for the two home, the two barns on the home farm. And we kept them going for a good many years. We kept the show cattle there and the higher price cattle. We always had all registered cattle. During the 1970s, we did a lot of exporting to many foreign countries. We would buy heifers in New York or Canada or wherever we could find them and then export them to Europe. An awful lot of them went to Hungary, Italy, France, Yugoslavia, and Saudi Arabia, a lot of those countries, Turkey. 
to name just a few of the countries where we export it to. We did that for several years and then the test requirements became so tough and everything wasn't worth it. We quit showing extensively in about 1971 or 72 and just went to the local shows, Michigan State Show, Michigan State Fair. I went to the Michigan State Fair for about 50 some years. In 1985, we built what is now the office over Green Meadow Farms and built some more barns to hold heifers, mostly all Canadian cattle. In 1998, we built the new outfit on Riley Road. I think you know about the history of Green Meadow Farms after that time. So we will talk about some other things.